Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today I have a video that hopefully will help you guys achieve the curly hair of your dreams. We are going over 10 curly hair mistakes that you are making, and when I say you, I also mean me. I'm not exempt from this. I do a lot of these knowing that I shouldn't. Some of these you may have heard before, and I am just repeating them because I think they are important, and hopefully some of these are new to you, and they can help your hair gain. But before we get into today's video, make sure you are subscribed so you never miss out on a video from me. You can also go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Dana Gagliotti. I will have all of my socials down below if you want to go check those out. These are in no particular order, by the way, so um, it's not like one is more important over the other. So number one would be not enough trial and error with your products. I see this a lot and I'm guilty of it too, uh, where people will just like use a product once or twice and they're like, oh no, this is no good for me. Fair enough, maybe not, but the thing about curly hair, and I think this is very important for those of you who are just starting out on your curly hair journey, sometimes it takes four, five, six tries with one product to get the results. Don't automatically hop, skip, and jump to the next thing because it's not just about product with curly hair, it's also about technique. And I feel like a lot of people sometimes can get just caught up in the product. You wanna mix your products, you wanna play with ratios, you wanna play with water ratios in your hair. Maybe your hair likes it better when you apply product to it when it's dry, maybe it likes a lot of moisture. So you really, really, really have to play around with ratios, with combinations of products. A lot of the time, I mean, it may take two, three, four different products, little amounts of each to get the perfect hair day. Um, so don't be afraid to play around with products. And now more than ever is the perfect time to do this because if you have a bad hair day, no one's going to know. So number two is not deep conditioning enough. And this is my number one issue. I'm just really lazy now when it comes to deep conditioning and there's no reason for it. Deep conditioning is so important, especially when your hair is on the mend and it needs a little bit of extra TLC uh, while you're transitioning or anything like that. Deep conditioning is going to strengthen your hair. Um, and when I say deep conditioning, this also falls under like protein treatments or really any type of treatment that is going to be beneficial to your hair. On top of deep conditioning, I highly recommend you guys getting some sort of shower cap or wrapping a towel um, or using like even the steam of your shower <clears throat> while you are deep conditioning because it's going to help that treatment penetrate your hair even further. And with regular deep conditioning, you're going to notice such great results. I think I have a video or two on my favorite deep conditioner, so I'll be sure to link that if you guys want to check it out. So I said I was bad at number two, but I'm actually probably worse at number three and that is not touching your curls while your hair is drying especially now that i'm doing this curl and teen no heat challenge it's really difficult i think it's more like of an impatience thing with me when i let my hair dry and just do something else like get really into a book or play like a video game or something i notice my hair looks so much better and my curls are more defined now if you're air drying and you want to do those like little flips back and forth that's fine i would say don't start doing that until your hair is starting to form a cast do as i say and not as i do in this instance because it will make a really big difference ah, okay this is a good one too so number five is using products that are too heavy or just using too much product on your hair you know, just because something says it's for curls, that's not, we gotta, we gotta investigate a little bit further. A lot of curl products have rich butters and oils, especially when I didn't have much guidance um, based on my hair type. There really weren't a lot of people that I could look to with similar curls, at least that I knew of at the time. There's a fine line between having hydrated hair and then your hair being too hydrated and then weighed down. I was finding myself using a lot of products with much richer ingredients than I needed and it was causing this like stringiness and oiliness and I thought it was my curls just not being healthy um, but in reality I was just using too much and the wrong stuff. Okay so number six is not distributing your products enough. I feel like I hear people talking about this but I do want to reiterate the importance of it because 
you need your product to hit every inch of your hair. Otherwise, you're going to have sections that are frizzy. You're going to have sections that maybe don't curl the way that you want them to. For a long time, I was just scrunching the product into my hair because I didn't want to rake and separate my curls. Even when I would rake my product into my hair, I felt like it just, it just wasn't doing it. So I find that when I apply product to my hair and I use a brush to distribute it, the, you get such better coverage of product and your curls tend to look a little bit more uniform, which actually is another curly hair mistake that everyone is making is to think that all of your curls have to be uniform. I have like eight different textures on my head and all of you guys tell me, you know, oh, I love your hair, I love your hair. Thank you so much. But the point is, it's not perfect. I have like the underneath part is like barely curly, the top is super curly, and like the middle is something in between. I mean, some people do, they have totally uniform curls. I am not one of those people, and I don't think it's something that you have to strive for. I don't think that, you know, having curls that all look the same is the end all be all of curly hair, so stop stressing about that. Okay, so um, number seven is not scrunching your hair enough. I feel like once I started doing these no product hair routines and I realized that I needed to scrunch a lot of water in my hair just to bounce my curls up, I realized how little I was doing it when I was actually putting product in my hair and putting the effort into like doing a full hair routine. It's amazing what scrunching will do for your hair and how well it does actually reinforce that curl. It's like the equivalent of like blending your foundation, like blend basically until your hand falls off. So same thing, like scrunch until your hands fall off and then scrunch a little bit more. So, number eight, don't neglect your haircuts. And when I say haircuts, it doesn't have to be like a full on chop every time. I mean a dusting, like something that you could do yourself. Trust me, you'll probably feel more comfortable doing it yourself than going to a salon. And it's really just to go through and do like a micro trim of the ends even. Just that little bit is going to stop split ends from traveling up your hair. I used to be so guilty of this too and I would subscribe to the school of thought that, oh, well if I cut my hair it's not gonna grow. That's so not true. My hair, I will say my hair grows quickly, but my hair really started to grow rapidly when I started doing those little micro trims on myself. Get yourself a pair of scissors, especially now because salons are not open. I will link the little set that I bought from Amazon that works great and give yourself a little trim every, every once in a while. I do about every like eight to 10 weeks. I could probably use one now actually. So maybe I'll do that after this video. I highly, highly recommend keeping up with that. Your hair is not going to grow by letting split ends sit at the end of your hair. Those are just gonna travel up and all that means is the longer you wait, the more you're gonna have to cut off. Okay, so number nine I feel like is probably my fault and this came because I am getting a lot of DMs from you guys saying that, you know, my curls aren't holding anymore. I think a lot of people confuse the fact that I like softer curls with that you guys shouldn't use a hold product. All of this to say, I get a lot of DMs from you guys saying that your curls are not holding throughout the day or even you know into the next day and like eight times out of ten it's because you guys aren't using a strong enough hold product the heritage gel actually in particular that holds my curls like crazy so if you want to kind of delve into that maybe that's a good place to start because it is under ten bucks I feel like I see a lot of people neglecting layering hold products on top of their cream products that is going to do wonders for your curl retention in between washes so I said that these weren't in any particular order but I actually do feel that this one is the most important of all and that is to not take what someone else is doing and do it to a T. I think an easy thing to get swept up in in this whole curl journey is that um, I have to follow the CG method to a T. And guess what? It doesn't work for everyone. So if you're feeling frustrated, if you have tried it for months and months, I will say you're not gonna see results from it overnight. But if you are continually sticking to the CG method and it's just not working, make some adjustments. It doesn't mean <laughs> that your hair is going to never be healthy because you can't follow the rules to a T. You don't have to. And it's not about that. It's just about having curls that you are happy with that are easy for you to maintain and that you feel comfortable with. So I get so many messages from people who are so gung-ho on following this you know set of instructions perfectly and I just kind of like step back and ask a lot of the time and I'm like hey do you think maybe it's not working for you maybe we can make some adjustments and kind of go from there so I think it's really really important that you kind of assess you know maybe what is working for a lot of people isn't working for me and that's totally fine too and you'll find something else that works for you all right guys so that is hey 
All right, guys, so that is going to conclude the top curly hair mistakes that we're all making. <laughs> I hope that you guys found this helpful. If nothing else, hopefully this just was a good refresher for you. So I hope that you guys are having a wonderful day. Have an amazing rest of your week, and I will see you next time. Thank you.